Okay, I'm now in the bedroom upstairs. Let's see if um, this internet connection is better. I don't know what's going on downstairs in my studio. I was talking with Wayne about it. We either need to get a signal booster or run a hard wire down there. But I ho hope you guys in comments can maybe let me know up to which point what I had said was usable because I don't want to miss, you know, I, I, I want everything to be out there. Okay, so I I, I don't know if, if it's even possible for you guys to let me know what comment was, it's probably difficult, um, which comment was the last one you heard. Yeah, Ryan, I went upstairs, new computer, closer to my router. Um, I'm really, really frustrated that the connection downstairs just hasn't been so great because that's my studio and um, that's not acceptable for that to be like that so let's continue and you guys let me know if there was a big chunk missing that I'm going to need to go back over and I know the lighting here is not good I'm literally like just sitting here with the beagle in the guest room with my shitty um, camera um, yeah, the second stream I know was no good, but what about the first one? I know I got to use ethernet. I know we got to run a cape. We got to run it down there. It can't be wireless. I, I'd pretty much let Wayne know that, um, where Nicole said the second stream was no good. Hopefully some of the first stream was usable. Um, but let me know. And I want to. And now I'm, I'm holding this mic, which makes it difficult to, to navigate. Okay, so continuing with where I was at. Okay, I had talked about, um, I think I, I'm going to repeat back to where I think my stream started really cutting out where he accused me of poisoning the well with a kangaroo court interrogation I trust anyone to watch that video and see that I, I believe I was exceedingly fair it's funny that he only mentions me when I wasn't the only LNC member there but it's quite obvious here that that our chair sees me as the biggest threat so he's just going after me which I think is completely inappropriate for the party chair. I wasn't even the person who asked the most questions. But it was not a kangaroo court interrogation. It was me in a fact-finding uh, mission, which I not only am allowed to do, I think I'm duty-bound to do. And I recorded it and made it available to everyone as a courtesy, but no courtesy goes unpunished. If I did not do that, I would be accused of hiding things. There was no winning, and anybody with an open mind can see that's how I was being treated. And there isn't public wild accusations. The fact is the legitimate affiliate in New Hampshire has had their data stolen from them. And the, the national party is part and parcel of that. We need to flip the switch on that website until a decision is made by the LNC. And it appears my stream stopped again. I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe it is the uh, NSA or T, whatever. Oh, boy. Waiting again. I'm so sorry, people, but I'm going to keep going. It keeps cutting in and out. And it's back. I know. Um, hold on one second. Wayne, if you're on the on the network, can you come off the network? Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> Shut the door. Um, if you're on, can you sign off? I'm on. Okay. You can listen to me from, okay. You, don't, I didn't mean literally shut the door. Wait, <laughs> that was a joke. He comes and shuts the door. I was joking. I was totally joking. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. 
So where was I? So, um, yeah, I was saying that it wasn't a kangaroo court. I wasn't the only LNC member there. But the LNC chair is now targeting me, which is completely inappropriate. I was not the only LNC member there. But I apparently am the biggest threat. Funny. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I hope it didn't cut out on my last stream where um, he had talked about um, threats that he's received. Anybody who is receiving threats, I hope they are filing um, police reports. And anyone threatening our chair is engaging um, in unlibertarian, anti-libertarian evil actions. And nobody should tolerate that for an instant. And if I know or knew the identity of anyone making threats, I would publicly expose them. That is disgusting. Anyone listening to this that's making threats against anyone, you get out of this party. Okay. He goes on to say there's two different visions. He's the one now forcing a schism and saying that we all can't live together and claiming that the other libertarians have different principles. This is inexcusable. But if we want to talk about different principles, the principle of not virtually not saying anything for a year during lockdowns, the biggest civil rights crisis that has happened in our lifetimes that has caused needless misery, suicides, um, intergenerational poverty is absolutely inexcusable. So don't be on your high horse, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I consider that almost the destruction of the party as we know it because the party I knew would have said something over and over and over and over again. The idea of destructive messaging, that's your opinion. You want to know what this message you're calling destructive messaging is the messaging this party was founded on. If you don't like it, maybe this is where you're not comfortable. I'm not a perjurer. So I'm not going to say if you don't like it, you should go because I think that's gross. But that's in fact what you're saying here, that we can't live together. And you're acting like other people do not want to elect libertarians. I do. But that's not the only mission of this party. You've pretended like it is, but it isn't. Our bylaws even say it isn't. Throughout this, I've tried to stay positive. I ran for chair promising that I would not engage in social media flame wars and endlessly denounce other libertarians. And that is what I have stuck to. No, you haven't here. You've just went on the attack against one of your officers. And misrepresented me. I don't do two-hour videos denouncing my LNC colleagues. I don't either. I spent a two-hour video explaining the situation in New Hampshire. And maybe spent about 10 minutes criticizing. Because you want to know what? We are not above criticism. We are not sacred cows. I don't disparage the party in public interviews. Oh, it's party over principle. I disparaged our lack of COVID messaging, and I will continue to do that because it is shameful and disgusting. Continuing. I wanted to unite the party around that vision. Um, I did not seek this position. Yeah, you did. You ran for it. Come on. Don't give me the humble, humble brag. We all sought the positions that we have. That's ridiculous. I, I really detest humble brags. And he's done fantastic in a lot of these things he lists here. Funny. Bombs are still falling. Kids are still in cages. And here we are arguing this nonsense. This nonsense, is it? The nonsense... Of you being part of, even if you claim that you didn't know this was happening, the, the, the 
purging of a whole board of directors, the complete maligning of a bunch of new members of this party that are libertarians, whether you like it or not, that is not nonsense. Silence about the lockdowns is not nonsense. And in short, I did not run for chair of the third largest political party in the United States so we can argue over who controls the damn Twitter accounts. Good thing that's not what we're arguing about. We're arguing about your letter being used to completely disaffiliate, constructively disaffiliate the legitimate affiliate that we've affiliated with to start a new organization that's never affiliated with the national party, summarily elect, uh, appointed a board, no elections, no organizing convention. Those bylaws were not approved by anybody, were certainly not submitted to the national party. I see no statement of the ratification of the national um, statement of principles. And in fact, that's not how we affiliate to begin with when we disaffiliate. So stop pretending this is about who controls damn Twitter accounts because it isn't. Don't insult our intelligence. Ms. Harlos and a few others. Why don't you mention a few others? It's only been me. It seems like you want to go after. Perhaps I should be flattered. Somehow make this about attacking me. You're somehow making it about attacking me. It's obvious what she's doing and why. Really? I thought we weren't supposed to impugn motives here. Let me tell you, I'm the most simple of people, Mr. Chair. I don't hide my motives. I'll tell you right out what they are. But the fact is, she has obviously, clearly, substantively interfered in New Hampshire more than I have. How? By sticking up for them? How? Really, how? By doing an investigation? That's not interfering in the autonomy of an affiliate. That is called defending the autonomy of an affiliate. And everyone in the, on any side of this will tell you when they've asked me for my advice on what they should do that has nothing to do with their affiliation st- status with national, I've told them I can't advise you. That would be interfering with the autonomy of an affiliate. So don't lie about me, Mr. Chair. The only action I've taken here was indisputably proper. No, obviously plenty of people are disputing it. And routine. No, it's not routine if you knew what was going on. And it appears that you did. Ms. Jarvis says you did. Ms. Jarvis publicly stated that your letter was her justification for starting a new organization. And you never repudiated that. Stating a fact that no one disputed on the date I issued it. Um, I think Ms. Jarvis might dispute it because when I spoke with her, she was very unclear as to the fact that she was then the still the chair of two affiliates. As far as she was concerned, she was left. She was gone. Though that is very unclear. I will concede to you that is very unclear there. But the plans were already in place to file the new organization. And she used your letter as justification. Did you know about that? Don't lawyer up that it's technically true. Nobody cares about technicalities here. That is just lawyer speak. And that's just proving that it was worded carefully so that there would be plausible deniability. She used that letter and she said it was her understanding that it was the transfer of affiliate status from one organization to her new organization. You never repudiated that understanding when she published it and you still to this date have not repudiated that understanding. And when there was this issue where you had to sign a letter, and I do believe she told you because she said she was going to resign on the 7th. She was told by someone she won't name, and I don't think that was you, by the way, that there was another way. I do believe she told you about that other way, and you did not tell the LNC. This is not a routine thing. You should have told the officers. 
and to just hand wave this away as a silly digression from the matter at hand when all of these members have written you to tell you how it's not silly to them, I find extraordinarily disrespectful. And it says, what, if anything, we should do about the situation in New Hampshire right now? What, if anything, immediately return the website to the duly recognized affiliate of this and do that immediately. So, um, let me see if there's, I, I, I think that was the end of his letter, which was just half and half, half, half of a half answer and the rest attacking me from the chair. Um, when I mean from the chair, I don't mean from the chair as a person. I mean, Mr. Bishop Henchman is sitting in the position of chair and openly attacking an officer. Now, some people may say fairly enough that I openly attacked him. I think there's a substantive difference, the power differential for one thing, and the fact that the chair is supposed to be neutral. He certainly is not neutral. On these, on, on issues of the opinions of his board. He could have defended himself without attacking me. That is completely inappropriate for the party chair. I'd like to go through now the dump of data that Ken Molman um, provided us. June 5th through 6th, he didn't put here, but we were all together at an LNC meeting where I believe that Mr. Bishop Henchman knew this was in the works. I can't prove it. I need to directly ask him, but I believe he knew. My gut, and I've learned to trust my gut. On that Monday, Gilletta, ready to resign as chair over child labor t tweet, but someone reached out to her with another option, and I don't, again, believe that someone was our chair. Gilletta was unwilling to say who. I know who I believe it is. So she had this other option, and she spoke to Joe that day, and she somehow didn't mention that to him. She says she did. She says he knew the plan. She says it was her understanding that that letter was a transfer of affiliation, and he never repudiated that understanding, which she published. On the 8th, Jackie Perry was expelled. The New Hampshire party has expelled someone before, and so there is precedent. The funny thing is, I don't think anyone can claim this as, which everyone seems to have dropped now because they realize that the timing doesn't work, but um, she was expelled because of Gilletta's complaints. On the 9th, the new political committee was, fi was filed. This is the other way. You're going to tell me that JBH did not know this was going to happen? Now, you got to remember something here. There is something that's not on this timeline. And let me see if I can find it. What day did that announcement go up using JBH's letter on the New Hampshire website? I know I found out about it on Saturday, so I think that's the day it went up, and Saturday would have been the 13th. And you're going to tell me this whole week he didn't know this was going on, and he didn't know that his letter was being used for that purpose? I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. And I, June 12th, Joe called Gilletta to create a statement per Gilletta. I'm sorry, his fingerprints are all over this. He was involved. He was interfering. And now the legitimate affiliate has not had access to their data. 
and that puts the National Party at legal liability, I believe. And I'm not going to cover it up. I've had people try to silence me. I'm not going to cover it up. I consider what I'm doing whistleblowing. And you don't have to uh, like it. You don't have to think I'm polite. But the fact that I am uniquely singled out for attack should tell you something. And I'm not going to sit for this wholesale attack of a caucus of this party. I'm not. And I wouldn't if it was the Prags, no matter who it was. I would not. So let me answer some questions. Oh, uh, Robin, yeah. Boo's purse lady. Uh, she, she, uh, let me put this up here. Uh, Robin promises to perform her duty as the vodka purse lady again at Reno. Um, if I if I survive till then, I guess. Um, can I tell you what I anticipate? I anticipate that all these attacks upon me are just a prelude to try to remove me from the LNC. I've already been tried to be silenced. So... Don't be surprised. Yeah, I know. They're blaming the Quinones tweet on the LPMC. The LPMC has absolutely nothing to do with that. And I don't know if this cut out on the last stream. Um, but, you know, with all this guilt by association, our chair voted for Adam Bates for the platform committee. Adam Bates says that everyone who is closed borders or not at least absolutely open borders are a bunch of racists and their spouses should divorce them. Should I impute all that to JBH now? Because Adam Bates said I needed to divorce my husband because he wasn't open borders. And if you're not open borders, you are a vile, nasty racist. Continuing. Um, oh boy. Um, yeah, here. Uh, AKA Gent. Doesn't the affiliation status of a state party fall directly under your scope of influence? Yes. I, I was involved. See, they wanted to wait around a week for... Uh, LNC meeting and tried to act like that's the only place an investigation could take place. No. Uh, as, a, as an officer of this party, I could go and ask questions on my own. And the fact is, as secretary, I'm the official legal record keeper of this party. And if there's allegedly some new set of bylaws and some new organization, that's news to me. So yes, absolutely, I should be involved in looking at it. And shame on anyone who's trying to shame an officer for doing so. Um, the date on JBH's letter was the 7th, but it was later used for a post on the 13th that he didn't repudiate and he's acting like that letter just had to do with a potential fight over control over Twitter accounts. That's complete. I don't believe that. I believe that's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't pass the smell test. And Robin says, some people may claim that it is messy. Yeah, sometimes, you know, exposing this stuff is messy. Um, and I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, she never, she thinks she's, you know, always the victim or blah, blah. Listen, I give as good as I get. Simple as that. I don't, I don't complain about an awful lot of things because I know I dish it out. So I give as good as I get. But. I don't always, how do I put this? 
um, being overly concerned about the politeness or whether it's messy or not, to me, is completely missing the picture. I, I also, as a member, would rather have the transparency. And you guys do not deserve to be left in the dark for several days. The LNC likes to treat itself like this little elite club that gets to meet in the ivory tower and decide what information is going to be dispensed to the plebs. And I won't behave like that. I just won't. That's not the attitude I have. I'm not better than all of y'all just because I have a fucking title. In fact, I'm your servant. And this is how I serve. And not everyone's going to like it. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to protect liberty and the, and the party of principle. Not the party for the party's sake. The party of principle. Um, Theodore asks, can we get a letter from JBH recognizing the interim chair as the official head of the LPNH affiliate? You can bet your sweet ass I'm going to ask for that. Just Add Liberty said, did JBH's letter reference the kicking out of Jackie Perry or am I misremembering? His letter didn't reference it, but an email he sent to the LNC did, and he also posted it on his Facebook page. Everyone seems to have dropped that when they realized that the dates didn't work out, that Jackie Perry wasn't expelled until the day after his letter. And Jackie Perry's expulsion has absolutely nothing to do with this situation. That is an internal New Hampshire matter. There's precedent for doing it. It's not prohibited by their bylaws and it is allowed under Roberts. I don't know if it was conducted properly with a formal trial and all of that under Roberts, but that's for Jackie Perry to appeal to their judicial committee over. It may very well have been improper. That has nothing to do with any of this. Um, yeah, this is causing chaos in other state affiliates as well. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. Caused chaos at the Colorado meeting tonight where Colorado is probably going to pull out of the CRM program. And it's, we don't need that. This is, this, this is absolutely ridiculous. And let me tell you, this is why Colorado is, I don't want to say worried, but is getting very defensive. We have a lot of parallels to New Hampshire here in Colorado. There was a clean sweep of the board here in Colorado with near with all but one board member being replaced and all but two board members being Mises people. I'm being one of the ones that's not a Mises caucus member. Very similar. And when we all ran, including myself, though not a Mises member, we ran on a platform of radical, bold messaging that offends all the right people. Do you think we're going to be a target next of Mr. Chair? I think so. Everyone tonight was worried if our data was going to be stolen. That was the subject of the meeting tonight because of what happened in New Hampshire. So we're probably going to pull out of the CRM because we don't want our data stolen by national. That's a shame. And meanwhile, you had an LNC member forwarding a slanderous letter to the public list that slandered Colorado and its board and a bunch and the entire Mises caucus and acted like only men are in the Mises caucus, which is sexist as well.
And um, I think I've gone through all of the comments. I see an, an insult in chat, but that if there was an actual question or something to interact with, y'all know I interact with my critics in stream. Oh, Justin, I'm glad you said that. Let me put this um, on the stream. Justin says, I'm drafting an appeal to the Judicial Committee regarding JBH's unilateral disaffiliation of my state party. Um, I, uh, I can't advise you what to do, quite obviously, though you really right now are just a member and it wouldn't be me interfering in the autonomy of an affiliate. So... I don't have to be quite as cautious, though no matter what I say, I will be criticized for. As you guys note that the LNC is spending far more time trying to find problems with me rather than what's actually going on. Nice, it, it, It's all complete red herrings. Um, every member has this right and we don't exercise it enough. And an appeal to the Judicial Committee, I would suggest anyone upset about this Start getting your signatures in line right now. You need 10% of registered delegates at the last convention um, to draft, uh, to appeal to the Judicial Committee. I would wait for there to be something that comes out of the LNC. If the LNC does nothing about it, I, I think that's a decision as well that can be appealed. And as a delegate at last convention, Count me in to sign off on the appeal. I'll be one of your 10%. Uh, I'm not, okay. That's interesting. So Justin says he gets an automatic appeal upon disaffiliation. This is Oregon all over again because a disaffiliation requires a vote of the LNC. But what kind of has happened now is a constructive disaffiliation. I don't know. You could be correct there. Uh, I, I'm not, not the, the judicial committee isn't used enough for me to really be very well versed on it. So um, you, you may very well be correct. But if you do need 10% um, of the delegates, you can count me in for a signature. Um, just add um, Liberty S. Yeah, it sets a very dangerous precedent. That's that's part of the issue here. But it's not just the pres precedent of what he's done with New Hampshire. It's the precedent of the state party chair going to war against a significant portion of the party, which is what our former chair did. And, and JBH ran on a platform of not doing that. And he is doing precisely that. Worse than Nick. Yeah, um, an active shooter. I, I, I do think Gillette is being used. And um, I think there's a route out for her of this because they're setting her up to be the fall lady. And again, full disclosure, Gillette is, uh, uh, she's a friend of mine. It's breaking my heart to see her in the middle of this. I disagree with what she's done, but she's a, Gillette is a friend of mine. And um, she's being used. And I hope she can see a way out of it so that she's not. And she needs to name the person who told her there's another way. She needs to name that person. Because that is who needs to go down. Who is this person? Otherwise, she's going down. And it shouldn't happen. Uh, Mr. Biofan asked me who is the obvious person. Decide for yourself. I'm not going to name it because there's too many attorneys in this party and I don't want to get sued. Yeah, I agree with you, Kenny. And a lot of people have given me a lot of hell for this. But I like her. She's a friend. 
and she she doesn't yeah she she's wrong here on one sense she's wrong and whatever you, you get from being wrong you deserve but in another very real sense she does not deserve it and as always death is here to say hello and to remind us he's waiting as the fate of us all as I turn nihilist on you all. Yeah, um, that evidence on the Google Drive, um, Justin, isn't it's bullshit. I went over all that in my other stream. There's there's no there there. I um Listen, there's going to be some Mises people mad at me for saying this, but what's really funny is the whole joke. The reason why, it, apparently, yeah, too, now Den Mother is an official position in the caucus. It was a fucking joke that I said that. Why did I say that? Why did I say I was the Den Mother of the Mises caucus? Because I yell at them all the time. Because allegedly, you're not allowed to criticize the Mises caucus. But funny, I criticize them all the time, which is why I called myself the Den Mother. I'm like the lady who picks up her shoe and calls somebody by their full name and is like, don't make me hit you over the head with this shoe, young man. Because I criticize them all the time. So I'm going to say something now that might not make some of them happy. I went through that Google Drive fully expecting to see some stuff that made me mad. Because sometimes they get mouthy. Sometimes the Mises people do run off their mouths and say things that make me go, God, you know, just cool it. Cool your jets, please. Can we, can we tone down the testosterone slightly? But there was nothing there. There was no there there at all. Oh, boy. Um, so that's pretty much, uh, my response. I'll be posting a written abbreviated version of this on the LNC list. It might take me a little bit because I do not write nearly as fast as I can talk, but I wanted to talk to you guys about it first because apparently I'm not allowed to do this either. No matter what I do, I get criticized. And y'all can disagree with me that it's a sexist thing, but I think it's a sexist thing, and I have every right to think that. And um, all, going all the way back to Angela Keaton, nearly every woman that's been on the Ellen say, not all of them, can't speak for them all, has says there's been soft sexism on the Ellen say. And as somebody earlier pointed out, Joshua Smith has gone hard at the chair. Why wasn't his name mentioned? Not that I want him to be attacked, but why is it that the chair only mentioned me? Do you think he's kept his status of impartiality as chair? Do you think I can expect impartiality from him and his rulings on me? I don't. Not whatsoever, not at all. Okay, guys, unless there's a further, I'm just going to check here a second. Um, I do appreciate the support. Um, I am getting like, not trying to make a martyr out of myself or anything because I get, I get a ton of love. But I'm also getting a ton of hate. I'm not going to say I've gotten death threats or threats of violence. I haven't gotten anything like that. But you want to know what, you know, I know in some ways I can put on like the a really tough exterior. And I, I'm very like, in my opinions. But when it comes down to it, yeah, I, I see all the shit said about me that's just mean and nasty. And I'd be lying if it said it didn't hurt. 
So I appreciate the support because my, um, my feelings and self-esteem is crushed every single day from some of the bullshit I see about me. But I signed up for this. I didn't, I didn't think it would be this bad. But I did sign up for it. And, and if I didn't want to take it anymore, I could leave. I could resign, which I ain't doing, by the way. I'd stay just for spite. But that isn't why I'm staying. But I would. Because too many people want to see me go. So thank you for your motivation for making me stay. But um, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. Because it's the thing that keeps me going and not have my spirit completely, absolutely crushed. And it gives me hope that there is still some integrity in this party. And those of you who are becoming disappointed by this, um, um, just add Liberty um, asked uh, a question. Um, just shoot me an email at Pink Flame of Liberty. And yeah, I do. I can get that to you. Just add Liberty. Um, yeah, and, and, and all of this is inspiring the LPMC to stay funny enough. It's like I used to say, um, when people were going on and on about James Weeks, I used to say, do you want more dancing naked men? Because this is how you get more dancing naked men. So I say to these people who just continually slander the LPMC, you want more Mises geek people? This is how you get them. Be careful what you wish for. Okay, y'all. I am, um, and I do look forward to seeing you all at the Michigan convention. Um, and, uh, good night y'all. I got, I got a lot of shit to do. Bye bye. Let me figure out where my end button is. Cause I don't know where I put it. <laughs> oh God. Where is it? This is weird. Oh, here.